Welcome to worship at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Middleton, Wisconsin. We're glad you're here. I am Pastor Julie Cron, and I am new. I just begun serving here as the interim associate pastor. So welcome. Let's begin our worship today with a pause. Breathe in, breathe out. Make yourselves ready for worship in this season of Advent as we worship our God of hope. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read from Luke 1. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And all God's children said loudly, Amen.
Our reading today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and verse 16. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But the same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one who built me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day that I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have moved, been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word of any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make a great name, make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of earth, and I will appoint you a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evil evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appoint judges over my people of Israel, and I will give you rest from all of your en enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house will be your kingdom, shall be, your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forevermore before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came and said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. And he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have you ever pondered over the perfect gift and then only to second guess yourself after the purchase? You know, will she like it? Did I spend too much? What if he doesn't appreciate it? Maybe I should return it and just start over. You waffle, you wonder. And you don't, you, you won't know until you give the gift, until you commit. That questioning, that pondering, that uncertainty, that hesitation, perhaps we could call it doubt, that is part of our life of faith, part of our life of discipleship. Let's look at Mary. 
We might first think of Mary as obedient, as demure, as quietly saying yes to God's plan. We may have this picture in our mind's eye of of the Christmas pageant version of Mary, who is compliant and and meek and uh, kneeling right before the baby Jesus in the manger. But if you look closely at the gospel lesson for today, we're seeing many more facets of Mary. The Annunciation introduces Mary with these words. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Then this brief narrative uh, comes about. The angel greets Mary, calls her God's favored one. Gabriel describes God's plan for this miraculous conception. Mary expresses doubt. Gabriel explains God's plan in a little more detail. Mary consents. The angel departs. Done. That's it. But curious minds want to know more. And Mary, Mary wanted to know more, too. After all, she was perplexed, it says, by the angel message. It was a bizarre, I mean, it was a bizarre announcement. And she says so out loud. How can this be? (laughs) She asks. Her mind must have been racing. I know how these things work, she's thinking, and I am a virgin. There's a problem, (laughs) a big problem with this plan. But if this is true, and I would dare to bet that she would not have wanted it to be true, but if this is true, she is terrified. And not so much by the angel's appearance, but by the fact that she was a teenager. And now she's pregnant and out of wedlock. In her culture, that spelled trouble. She must have wondered, is anyone going to believe me, this angel visitation business? Am I going to have to leave town? Who, me, a favored one? No, I don't think so. I'm going to be shunned. I'm going to be scorned, ostracized. No one will want to be seen with me. How am I going to tell my parents? How am I going to tell Joseph? Am I going to be stoned for this? Her life, as she knew it, was on the line. Her marriage was on the line. Her reputation was on the line. Her very life was on the line. So, of course, (laughs) she's much perplexed by this. Of course, she's going to ponder these things. And she hesitates, maybe, she maybe doubts, she maybe waffles. What I want to know, what I wonder, is how much time elapsed between verse 37 and verse 38, between the end of Gabriel's uh, announcement to Mary and Mary's consent. How long? How long did Gabriel wait around for Mary to come around. In the Christmas pageants, Mary's answer always comes quickly. And if it doesn't, we hear a stage whisper, behold, comes from off stage, right? Behold, I'm a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Now, perhaps though, perhaps Gabriel had to wait. Maybe he waited patiently. Maybe he waited compassionately even. Maybe the angel's quiet presence allowed Mary the moments, the hours, all all the time she needed, perhaps. Maybe Gabriel's countenance was one that didn't elicit fear, but one that said, take your time, Mary, take your time. You are going to bear the Son of God into the world. This is no ordinary pregnancy. Your life will change. The world will change. We know from Mary's final words to to the angel that she agreed, right, to God's plan. But I appreciate that lapse in time, perhaps, from Mary's, how can this be, to, okay, let it be with me, Because I think that's how it works for us humans. We we struggle 
with obedience. We make the angel wait, so to speak, for an answer. We can be cautious when it comes to living out a life of faith in one moment and then eventually get to that wholehearted yes where we are doing what God wants us to do with our lives. The life of faith, the life of obedience, it has its ups and downs, definitely. We can be tentative and cautious one moment and then courageously jumping in with that yes in the next. And here in this text, it looks like we're in good company. The gospel text ends with these words, then the angel departed from her. This is the moment after Mary's yes. It's a moment I think we all know well, the moment after the certainty kind of wanes, the moment after the visitation, the union, the prayer ends, the beautiful worship uh, draws to a close. It's that moment when ordinary life (laughs) begins again. And the angel departed. And I'm sure in that moment, Mary wondered, am I crazy? Am I crazy? Am I really going to bear the Son of God into the world? Now, Gabriel does not stick around long enough to reassure her. He doesn't silence her critics. He doesn't ease the road before her. She is still poor. She's still pregnant. She still suffers. And I would bet (laughs) that she still waffled and then recommitted. She worried, but then she'd consented again. She hesitated and then learned to trust once again. She doubted and then set that doubt aside so that she could do what God was calling her to do. I can relate. Today, I'm going to ask you to remember Mary. When you are waffling in between, how can this be God in your life? And the, yes, let it be with me according to your word and doing what God desires for you. God asks us to do some wild, crazy stuff, like bearing Jesus into our world today with our words, with our actions, by doing things like being a peacemaker, by, by loving our enemies, those people we really don't like, can't stand maybe, by visiting those folks in prison, by befriending the outcast, the stranger. We bear Jesus into our world when we do the work the work of unraveling systems of of hate and oppression. When we bear Jesus into the world, we're standing with those who are fragile, those who are vulnerable. We're wading into the mess of the world, bringing about a word of love, bringing about a word of acceptance. Remember Mary. Remember Mary when God asks you to do this stuff, to stand with the scandalized, the uh, shamed. Remember Mary in all of her humanity, both her waffling and her willing consent to bear Jesus into the world. And remember that in every moment, as Mary questioned, as she pondered, as she waited and wondered, as she said yes, in every single moment, God looked upon her with favor and she was blessed as are you, my friends, as are you. In your wondering and your waiting, God looks upon you with favor. In your hesitation and in your yes, in your bearing Jesus out into this needy world of ours, and even in those moments of quiet desperation, in all the ups and the downs, you are never alone. The Lord is with you. And you are never never outside of God's loving gaze upon you. Never. Amen. All earth is hopeful The Savior comes at last Furrows lie open For God's created task This is labor of people 
who struggle to see how God's truth and justice set everybody free. People of Israel, you heard the prophet tell, a virgin mother will bear Emmanuel. She conceived God with us, our brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be prepared. New highways opened, new calls declared. Almost here God is nearing in beauty and grace. All clear every gateway in haste come out in haste. We first saw Jesus, a baby in a crib. This same Lord Jesus today has come to live in our world. He is present in neighbors we see. How Jesus is with us and ever sets us free. Well, hello and welcome. We're so glad to have you with us here today. A special welcome to those of you who are new and visiting. We're glad you're here. I have a couple of announcements to share with you today. The first is we want to invite you to Christmas Eve here at St. Luke's. Uh, We will be having services at 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9 with communion at the 7, 8, and 9. We won't have our usual Sunday morning uh, routine, just our Christmas Eve services with uh, Christmas Eve falling on a Sunday this year. Uh, We will also have a special online service here on YouTube and on our website, so we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure that you get notified when, when that and when that service comes out. And then on Christmas Day, we, uh, we will have a service at nine o'clock here at St. Luke's. We will also uh, be publishing our music of Christmas, our, uh, the live performance from the Middleton Performing Arts Center on our YouTube channel. And then the following Sunday, uh, we will uh, still be in our holiday scheduling where we'll only have a service at nine o'clock at St. Luke's. We will also have an online service for you as well. Uh, And then things will go back to normal the following Sunday with our regular four service schedule. Uh, The last announcement I want to share with you all is that as we come to the end of 2023, we want to uh, let you know that if you want to support the the ministries here at St. Luke's, you can do so in three different ways. I'm going to put those on the screen here. Just a reminder, um, you can do so online, text to give, or the offering boxes here at the church. That's all the announcements I've got for you today. If, uh, if you want to stay connected with us throughout the week, we have connect cards and the links below. We're reminded that God's purpose for St. Luke's is to connect, serve, and grow in Christ's love. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray now for the church, for the world, for all of God's creation. Come, O God of love. Hear our plea. Help us to bear your life-giving word of promise to all who will listen. Help us embody your light into this dark world. Come, O God of comfort. Hear our plea that those who mourn might find consolation in you. That those who take care of others might find rest that those who need renewal might find inspiration in this holy season. Come, O God of goodness, hear the plea of your creation. Open our eyes to see your power and your majesty in the detailed beauty of our world. And open our hearts to be gentle caretakers of the earth. Come, O God of justice, hear our plea and Spread compassion to all. Give us courage to speak justice, to seek justice, and by your Spirit, raise up prophetic voices today 
to challenge all that enslaves people, all that condemns many to lives of hunger and poverty and violence. Come, O God of peace, hear our plea for harmony in this world, especially those places devastated by war. We, we lament the pain and the sorrow of those grieving in the land we call holy. Give us the opportunity to work for peace, to serve our neighbor, to give hope, reconciliation to those who are estranged, and to bring healing to those we name before you now. Come, O oh God of hope and joy, hear our prayer for your light to shine brightly in the darkness. Give us the help we need to live in the light of your unconditional love, your unconditional grace. This day we pray for the families of St. Luke's, for Brian and Ann Veit, for Dylan and Nadia, for Jillian and John Vesley, Connor and Nora, for Mary Vickers, for David and Amy Veith, Ian, Evan, Ivan Veith, Sharon Vleck, and Ben and Candace Wagner, Miles and Henry. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please pray with me as we pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. Amen.
Thank you for joining us. If you want to support the ministries of St. Luke's, you can make an offering online at stlukes-elca.org backslash give. A huge thank you to all for your continued support. If you're in the Middleton area and would like to join us in person, we gather every Sunday morning and you can find our full worship schedule on the website. If you're just finding us for the first time, welcome. Let us know you're here by filling out the Connect card below. Thank you for worshiping with us.